Yes, Frontline. I'm going to invoke the rule on the 15 sittings, and I want you members to come to the house. Don't miss for the 15 sittings. Even the speaker could not take it anymore. A monologue of NRM legislators took place in Parliament this week. In fact, the Petroleum Supply Amendment Bill was passed in the absence of the opposition MPs, and still the boycott drags on. Unknown. We still stand by our earlier stance, that even if the house is called tomorrow, we shall not be a part of it. We have formalized even our boycott with the exchange of correspondences. This is but a sampling of the incidents of the popularization and lack of tolerance that characterize both sides of the political arena. Ah. Elsewhere in the northern part of the country, the Balalo question has sparked sharp diversions between the locals and the herders. The love for your culture, the love for your ethnic group is not tribalism. The president's attempt to resolve the issue in a recent visit to the region left more questions than answers. With the nation at crossroads, is there any hope to find a common ground for the dialogues that hold Uganda at heart? Who has the moral authority to bring the country together? As the ugly chapters of the Ugandan story continue to unravel, is the country ready to wrestle the demons of her past? This is The Frontline. <laughs> A very good evening and welcome to this edition of The Frontline. I'm Charles Mongu Shampagi. And tonight on The Frontline, we explore more about the question of pushing for national reconciliation. Is it even viable? How does it fit in what is going on? Parliament is sitting only one side of it. The opposition is still boycotting, now entering the third week, I think, more than three weeks of boycott, and they're receiving threats and warnings from the presiding officer that if you miss 15 consecutive sittings when parliament is in session, then you risk losing your constituency. They're vowing they will not go back. If we look at what's happening in northern Uganda, the bitterness, the anger over the Valalo question, herdsmen that have settled on lands, uh, communal lands in northern Uganda, and grazing their lands, I mean grazing their cattle there, and uh, to the discomfort of the crop farmers in that area. What is being talked about as land grab schemes in the northern part of the country, which is emerging out of, uh, has emerged out of a bitter war that lasted over two decades. Is that a country that can talk about reconciliation? Is the country that can exercise past demons when it's actually living with not scars, but fresh wounds. To discuss that with me, I have a panel. Um, uh, a few members will be joining us shortly. But let me start with introducing the Honorable Ibrahim Semo Junganda. He is a frontliner. He represents the people of Kira Municipality on behalf of the Forum for Democratic Change. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Charles. I have uh, the Honorable Joel Senyonyi. Many of you know him uh, for his leadership of the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament of Kosase. Yes, yeah, the Public Accounts Committee. Yes, Public Accounts Committee um, uh, of Parliament, and uh, he represents the people of Nakawa West constituency. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Charles. Good evening to you and your viewers. I have from uh, Molanda, from the Uganda Media Center, Executive Director and the Frontliner, Ofono Opondo. Very nice to have you, sir. Thank you, Charles, and good evening to our viewers. I'll be joined by a couple other panelists tonight to discuss this very important, but also very tricky subject. Le le let me start with uh, you, Honorable Ibrahim Semujung, and that's a simple question. We're talking, um, th there are suggestions that are emerging. And the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs um, recently at an event organized by the uh, Netherlands Institute for Multiparty Democracy, the launch of a new outfit. I hope that we would have uh, the Honorable Beatrice Krasso joining us in the discussion, but she's out of the country. 
national reconciliation can is uganda ready for national reconciliation is it viable at this state at this point in time <clears throat> i think the only difference uh, this time is that the call is made by a minister in the government um, and using uh, maybe a different name <laughs> but the call for a national dialogue has been on for many years now and i don't think the content uh, envisaged in the call by honorable nobody mao is different from the content of those who are calling for a national dialogue. I will, I will actually want to know, um, someone to help me understand <clears throat> whether in the context um, in which this call was made is different from the context in which those who are calling for a national dialogue have been making the calls. But there has been an attempt. There has been an attempt, at least at a political level, to aggregate the issues affecting Uganda's, uh, <coughs> Uganda's future and the politics, and then use the same voice. <coughs> the very iPod they're talking about started uh, under the guidance of the Netherlands Institute for Democracy. At one time, by the way, it had gone very far, mm. I think in the 90th parliament, when the political parties in parliament, including the NRM, sponsored bills for electoral and administrative reform. Correctively, they came into parliament and handed over those bills to the deputy speaker of parliament at that time, late Jacob Olanya. But at, at, at some stage, the person who was representing NRM, who was supposed to be representing NRM, the Honorable Mambabazi, uh, disowned that process. Mm. Then people representing government to process bills on, on, on elections said there was no time to deal with them. And since then, the time hasn't been found. The other issues that are troubling the country are issues that I don't think can be addressed by a political process. Uh, either by bills in parliament, maybe that's what fits in the, in, in, in the call by the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs. I'll tell you, and I've said this many times, I hope I will not offend him. One time I had a discussion with the Honorable Amanyo Mshega. He had a meeting with President M7, and the President wanted to know from his friend what or why there was a problem in the country. And he summarized it this way, that uh, the country thinks the West is benefit, benefiting more from your administration. The West think, the, the, the West means every part of the Western Uganda, mm. including where you come from. They think- From uh, Bunyoro? To every to part Chigezi. of Chigezia. Mm -hmm. The West think, no, 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 it is Ankole that is benefiting. When you go to Ankole, no, 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 it is, uh, it is Wahima. When you go to Wahima, it is Museveni's family. And he said that is the problem. Mm. But there are also reports that have come up to suggest, I remember a report, that report I, I was published in the Daily Mont about the road infrastructure, how many roads had been done in Western Uganda vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the country. The recent report by the um, the Corporate Commission, Corporate Commission <coughs> about Western Uganda dominating, dominating. and later on Ankole dominating jobs in the public sector. It takes me back to the beginning, of, actually the beginning of this administration when people were choosing Ivan Ankole of saying to Atere Mbundu to Afunovo Jirero. We fought, and, and it's our turn. I uh, won't translate it that way. So the it's our turn. We got the, space to speak. No, no, I mm. want to say it is our turn. Is, uh, space to no, speak. no, I don't want to mm. translate it the way you're translating <laughs> it. 
The Honorable Kategaya read in one of the seminars for Forum for uh, Parliamentary Forum Advocacy. Yeah, parliamentary Powerful. Advocacy Forum. Yes. Mm. Specifically in Barara. He pleaded with his friend to peacefully transfer power. <coughs> and he said, uh, whether perceived or real, people from the area where the prison hails from will pay for <coughs> what they may not even have done. Mm. And he gave the examples of uh, Idi Amin, what happened when Idi Amin was removed. He then told us uh, when Milton Obote was removed, people drove to Akokoro. They thought that Obote had developed his own area only to pass by Akokoro and they are told, but you have left it behind. Because they didn't see anything different from the villages uh, neighboring Akokoro. So I, I don't know what the Honorable Nobat Mao, the Minister for Justice, what motivated him to say so and uh, what he thinks should be the issues for reconciliation. Because at the beginning of the seven years administration, there was a commission similar to what was it, uh, to that that was in South Africa, at which people went and spoke. Uh, South Africa's uh, Truth and Reconciliation yes. Commission of uh, we had one here. Bishop Desmond we had one here. People spoke, and uh, subsequently, the constitutional making process. I actually thought, and I still think, that uh, at this stage, we actually need to implement. Uh, the Honorable Robert Moore at one time was saying the Ruero consensus had collapsed, that we need to build a, a new consensus. I don't think we need a commission where people will go to say what to choose each other. Um, so the issues that are troubling Uganda are issues that can best be dealt with with a political, uh, meaningful, transparent political system where those who are holding power and are using it to benefit mainly their family and, and friends and, and, and maybe a few tribesmen, uh, a process that will allow them to transfer power peacefully. And then subsequently, each administration, uh, like it has happened in other, may not solve all Uganda's problems, but it will seek to solve at least some problems. Thank you. you. You've been referring to the Honorable Norbert Mao and he's joined us in the studio. Honorable Mao, very nice to have you. Thank you. I'm happy to be back on the front line after yes. a very long time. A very long time. And uh, we're happy to have you back. Uh, the Honorable Norbert Mao is the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs and has actually ignited, reignited the talk about a national reconciliation. Now, Honorable Mao, one is I'd like to hear from you. What exactly is your idea? Number two, how different is it from other previous attempts? And I will just run through that briefly. You have uh, 1985, after four years of war, the collapse of the Nairobi peace talks. And uh, no, no, you have a coup in Kampala that uh, leads to the fall of the Obote government which are the coup leaders for that short period engage in some peace talks in Nairobi, later turned out peace jokes. 1986, you have the NRM coming to power, creating the umbrella government, all inclusive, bringing everybody on board. We have the making of the constitution, uh, first the constitution, no, the expanding of the NRC, 1987. You have uh, the making of a new constitution, the constitutional commission, um, uh, and the birth of a new constitution in 1995. You turn to multi-party politics in uh, 2006. Right now, when you're talking about national reconciliation, and I didn't even mention the Arthur Dare, uh, Justice Arthur Dare Commission, uh, that on human rights uh, abuses in Uganda up to 1986. When you talk about national reconciliation, Honorable Samuel Junganda talks about national dialogue. What exactly is it that you're trying to advance and why? By the way, this, this debate should not be about me. Even if I were to drop dead tonight, Ugandans will still talk about national dialogue and reconciliation. So I start by advising those who are obsessed with Nobat Mao for whatever reason to really chill. 
uh, it's not necessary to talk about me. Let's talk about Uganda. I am not the author of the idea of national dialogue. I'm just in a position where I may be able to contribute towards moving things. You know the principles of Lord, effort, and fulcrum in basic physics. You may have a fulcrum, you may even have a lever. Actually, there are four. Mm. You have a lever, the fulcrum, and the effort to move a load. So you need a place to stand. For whatever reason, I'm standing at a place where I can contribute towards moving things in a certain direction. Of the four things, what are you? I leave are you that a lever? To you. Are you a fulcrum? Are I, you the I Lord? Are you the effort? Of course, the person who is moving is not one of those. Mm. What did you get in physics? <laughs> no, no, I'm asking, <laughs> which one are you? I, I, I am beginning to suspect viewers. that you did not read your abbot. <laughs> I can't be the liver, I can't be the fulcrum, I can't even be the Lord. Mm. And uh, I'm the person who you would say is holding the liver, delegated as a minister. And so let's get that out of the way first. I do not like to be a subject of discussion. And that, I have to say at the outset, is the biggest disappointment I have had with politics. That people attack each other instead of attacking the ideas. I, so far I have listened, but I have not had any of my ideas being attacked. Um, instead, people discuss people. Mm. So, what is the idea of a national dialogue? It is not original to Uganda. All countries at one point or another must have some kind of discussion by whatever name called. And I first would like to distinguish the idea of a national dialogue for a new national consensus and reconciliation from what you are talking about. I don't think the Nairobi Peace Talks were a national dialogue. They may have had some elements, but definitely they don't qualify. I don't think the, the Commission of Inquiry into Human Rights Abuses from 1962 to 1986 amounted to a national, a national dialogue. It was um, a platform to keep a record of abuses. Now, what is the biggest problem in Uganda today? Three words, abuse of power. So, what is the answer? Two words, taming power. Mm. So, all countries that have a national dialogue are grappling with problems of abuse of power. Whether you talk about corruption, it is still about abuse of power. Actually, every problem can be explained by abuse of power. Whether you talk about nepotism, it is abuse of power. Whether you talk about violence, human rights abuses, torture, disappearances, killings, and whatever. All that is uh, abuse of power. Rigging of elections, abuse of power. So do we have a problem in Uganda? Yes. And the nature of the problem, in my view, is structural. Some people think it is about removing an individual. We have tried that before, and many, many countries have tried that before. You remove individuals, and then you end up with something worse. So I have not had any convincing argument against the idea of a national dialogue. At the beginning of the 11th parliament, the president announced the bills that are his government's priority. 
And among them, he included the National Transitional Justice Bill. That's actually the headquarters of National Dialogue. Therein, we have inserted the idea of a National Dialogue and Reconciliation Commission. Now, the reason why people are skeptical about National Dialogue is because they think the government is going to be the music conductor so that it is driven by the government. I have been advocating for National Dialogue even be before I joined the government as a cabinet minister. And my ideas have not changed. I have written articles about National Dialogue. So the idea of a National Dialogue and Reconciliation Commission is about national healing because the country is hurting. And every part of the country is hurting. Documents have been written by even NGOs. You asked about the issues. Let me mm. read to, for you some, some of the, the, the issues so that you tell me whether they matter or not. Because you'll, you'll tell me whether they were included in Nairobi Peace Talks. So, the, the, what we are discussing normally are the symptoms of the abuse of power whether political violence and so on. Of course, for those who want to engage seriously in this discussion, you, you realize that now we have fault lines in, in our, 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 our country. And that is uh, because of the questions, unanswered questions. Of course, number one is the Buganda question, which as you know, led to the collapse of the Lancaster House consensus. And Renzori question, that's another one. You have Karamoja question. You have the Northern question because of the unique uh, colonial policies. You have got transnational communities. You have got the military question. What's the role of the military? In, in Uganda. The question of equity, what in Buganda here is say Mwanawani, and Mwanawani changes. Today it is uh, somebody, tomorrow it will be somebody else. Then you have got the, the relationships question. In, in other words, how do we make our contributions felt as the building blocks of Uganda? And then, of course, the elephant in the room, political transitions question. There are those who erroneously think that every time President Museveni is sworn in in Kololo, that is a transition. Mm. When Obama won his second term, there was no transitional commi committee because he was basically going back to the White House. But when Trump won, there was a transitional committee. So people need to understand that. Is that erroneous thinking or it's how it is presented? By, by, those, those, who, by, do, by those who, who are mistaken. Mm. Because um, when, when you have a transition, well, that means you are having a different individual, probably with different worldview. So you, you need some kind of uh, way to dovetail things. There are things which remain the same, and there are things which change. change. Uh, transition is not 100% change. It's actually a manifestation of both change and continuity. So that's the elephant in the room. There is the free and fair election question. That is something which is, uh, is very important. Then the land and natural resources question and social services question. I had the speaker also complaining mm -hmm. about picky contracting for road repairs. And then you have the, the youth question. If you have almost 80% of your population below the age of 30. So these are, these are questions which are not simply about who is running the state. 
these are questions that we must have some basic consensus about. So in the Transitional Justice Bill, which in itself is a recognition that we have hurt each other and we need to heal, how do you put your past behind you? All countries have had to deal with that. America after the Civil War. In America, there's still transitional justice because of the question of the Native Americans. In Canada, they have the same. Australia, they just had a vote mm. and it didn't go well for, for many people, again, because of demographics. So that is the essence of the transitional justice bill. We also propose to put in the idea of a war victims fund. War victims is not just about northern Uganda. It's about war victims all over the country. And ideally, we should recognize that there are ways in which you can contribute to people feeling a sense of belonging to the country, and they feel less abandoned. So you compensate individuals, but you also compensate communities. That way, the, the, the entire community is, is lifted. Thank you. I, I, I need to move on to someone else. Um, uh, Honorable Joel Senyonyi, the question really is, when the country chose to go multi-party, I think the thinking was that the politics of competition can resolve some of the issues that the country has. Is Uganda ready for uh, reconcil uh, reconciliation talks? or national dialogue? And, and what would be constituted in that kind of dialogue? I think, Charles, the answer is yes and no. And sadly, there's no clear answer. And I'll tell you why I say yes and no. Yes, because Ugandans are tired of being in the state in which they are governed. And so they want better. No, because it just cannot happen. And the reason it cannot happen is twofold. Number one, there has not been genuineness, if I'm to zero down on the person of Mr. Museveni on the other end, or government, if you like, it has not been there that they are serious about any kind of engagement, or what they want to call it dialogue, national reconciliation, whatever name you want to give it over the years. Take iPod, for example. For many years, Mr. Seven used iPod as a PR stand that you will go and meet and he will show the rest of the world that you see, for me, I engage with my opponents, we meet, take tea together, and so on, but does not take anything serious out of that. And so when they would meet and have those engagements, the FDC, which was, you know, the leader then, on this other side, they would go out to hold activities and they would be global. And they would say, but wait a minute, yesterday we were discussing and saying there should be free space for everybody, but it just cannot happen. But man took pictures with you and showed the world that all is well, but you just cannot go out there and operate. So it's been a PR stand for him. When he attended the iPod summit in May of 2019, I could see the excitement you know, on his face because he thought, okay, now, this is a grand image that I'm showing out there. Mm. But you leave that room and there's nothing tangible to account for. So there's not been genuineness because for him it is, what can I get out of this process? And that's why as NUP, we said we shall not be party to iPod. Not because we don't think it's important to engage, but this is a fallacious way of engaging. You're not going to get anything good out of it. Number two, aside from the lack of genuineness. This government, and Ms. Sam Seven in particular, will never dialogue about the issues that concern Ugandans. He will never. For him, it is, okay, let me engage you. What do you want? Is it some money you need? Is it a ministerial position? Is it that kind of thing? That, that's his way of engaging. And he has done it before. You see, when he was speaking on the natural achievements of this world, he was saying, I'm trying to engage with the opposition, I'm trying to bring them to, a, to the fault. He picked natural achievements, made her youth state minister. He picked Betty Yamongi from UPC, made her minister. He picked Betty Kamia from UFA. 
and several others. Muhammad Beswala, Kezala, who was chairman of DP, made him deputy, high commissioner to India. And so for him, that, that was his way of engaging with the opposition. But he's not addressing the critical issues that are being raised. And of course, that, that kind of tokenism works for some of these individuals because some people's aspirations, in my view, are too low that once you give them some of these appointments, they're excited, you know, they have arrived. But the real critical issues are not addressed. And he does not want those issues on that table. As NUP, because many times the media has asked us, are you guys for any kind of negotiation, dialogue, national reconciliation, the different names you use? And we have always said this country actually has wanted to have a discussion about the state of affairs of our country. But what are the issues on table? Before you say NUP come to this discussion table, we are saying you are brutalizing our people. We have buried so many people. Many are in jail for no reason whatsoever, but for political belonging. There's a young lady called Olivia Lutaya who's been in jail for coming to three years. She has become the face of our incarcerated comrades. Three years you're holding on to people and you're saying the state is still looking for evidence against them, inciting violence, terrorism, they you know, come up with all sorts of things. But you're saying you come, we, we dialogue. About what exactly? People are missing, and that's part of the demands we are making as we step out of parliament. You have admitted to arresting these people. For four years, their loved ones do not know where they are. But you're saying you come and we talk. About what exactly? First, get your boot off my neck. Before you, we, we even get to say, okay, we can have a discussion, and this should be the agenda, and so on, before we get there. Can you deal with these critical issues? So he's not willing to do so. Can those critical issues be part of the discussion that you have? And that's what I'm saying. He's not willing to have those as part of the discussion. Because yes, we, like, like I'm saying, it should not be, you come, what do you want, a ministerial position, a car or money, and so on. We would be happy to discuss governance issues of our country, how our country is run, how our elections are conducted the shrinking democratic space. But he does not want to have a discussion about these things because Mr. having a discussion about those things is like cutting off his legs. Mr. Fono Pondo, is this country ready? Does it need a <coughs> national dialogue? Does it need reconciliation? Reconciliation about what? Well, that question presupposes that there is no dialogue going on. From where I sit and I stand, in the NRM and from where, where NRM is standing, there has been actually continuous dialoguing, national dialogue, and subset dialoguing since 1986, January, when NRM took charge of the country. Some of the things people think should have been the issues, might not have been touched on, but that does not mean that dialogue wasn't taking place. Some of the, some of the issues were touched and unresolved. That too does not mean dialogue was not taking place. Let me pick from the phrase of my brother, Norbert Mao, the Minister of Justice. He says, any process by any name according to him, would be dialogue. Then he goes to contradict, to disqualify the Tito Okelo Nairobi Peace Talks as a not. In my view, that was a dialogue. Was it because, a national dialogue? Yes. It, a dialogue? Was it, it, a it, it, dialogue? It, it brought, for example, deep leadership of Semogere from hostile posture to joining that government, as you know. The Honorable Sam Kutesa became the Attorney General of that government. The Honorable Semogre became the Minister of Internal Affairs of that government. The Honorable Dr. Laro Tuno became the Minister of Foreign Affairs of that government, people from different backgrounds, but came because they believed then that those were the issues and that formation would bring the country together. They tried, they collapsed. NRM came. When NRM could not be touched by the UPC elements, the DP elements found NRM touchable and they joined the government and that dialogue 
went on, including the elements that you mentioned, <coughs> the Justice at the Order Commission, which, by the way, is actually what led to the Constitutional Commission of Justice Benjamin Odoki, where my sister, Dr. Miriam Matembe, served, and they produced a draft constitution and a report, which is available in detail. Some of the things that were in the constitutional commission, in the constitutional report, and the draft constitutional, the, the, the draft constitution, some were shaded off, even without touching. Others were attached fully and resolved in the CA. Others remain depending. That's the reason partly why the Constitution has amendment provisions. And we went on and on and on. Today, we have a major dialogue platform, two in my view, or three, the regular elections, whether you say they are not free and fair or otherwise, that is part of national dialogue whenever we go for the, cost, for the elections. And then the, the continuous rumbling in parliament is by itself a dialoguing process. Whether it is transparent, whether the issues are genuine is a different matter to me, but that is a dialoguing process. And then the third element the, the three that are backed by the laws of Uganda is the judicial system. That if you find that these other two processes haven't attended to your issues, you can go to courts of law and seek interpretation, seek redress, and so on, seek a resolution of a matter. To me, that is. And then the fourth is obviously the civil society processes that are going on in the churches in the, and so on. So it is going on. So I find it probably it is for self-validating and I don't know why Honorable Mao says, why don't you attack the issues? Why are you attacking the, 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 the carry of the message? I think the carry of the message is as good as the message. So for my would not find a problem if people have issues mm. with Honorable Mao and they're accusing him of trying to validate himself with this national dialogue with the reconciliation. Thank you. Where the NRM is, I think those platforms well utilized are sufficient to cause, to bring genuineness, to create a new consensus. If Honorable Mao wants, I have not read the bill he's referring to, but if Honorable Mao wants to this, this matter to be <coughs> a matter on the national table, he now enjoys a privileged platform. I just don't know why he chooses to speak about it when he goes to open it to preserve of a, a function public and so on and so forth. I don't know why. He does not table it in the cabinet and subsequent in parliament. He'll or in the alternative, since he joined the government by way of memorandum of understanding with the NRM party and the principal of NRM, who happens to be the president, I don't know why he doesn't go to that agreement they signed and say, now I want this other matter also included and discussed and resolved. And he can even, he can even propose the steps through which this should go to have a meaningful, all-embracing resolution. He, he, is, that, he, he, that he is he feeling insufficient inside there? So he chooses to come out, to mobilize from the outside. And if he, if he thinks he wants to mobilize from the outside, to attack the inside, uh, that's also OK. It's a strategy. As, as, as long as he, he does it without violence. Thank you. Honorable <laughs> Dr. Maria Matembe, 
senior citizen, uh, thank you for joining <coughs> us. And, and I'll come straight with the question. You were part of the commission that birthed the 1995 constitution, and you actually sat in the Constituent Assembly to deliver the constitution that was promulgated on the 8th of October uh, 1995. Many Ugandans, and the way it was presented then, was that the making, the process of making a new constitution and its promulgation was a new dawn for this country. Why are we now besieged with the question of national dialogue, national reconciliation once again? First, <coughs> first of all, I'm sorry to come late because it was the NBS to pick me, and so they came late, and down the road there, the, the vehicle broke down. <laughs> and you know, we people who were chased off with no pension, with nothing, we are not like these guys who drive here and come here and uh, talk peacefully. No wonder Mao went back there that you could be sorted out. I never went back. I was <laughs> never there. <laughs> you are the one who, if you go there, you will have gone back. You, you were never there anyway, but I think the, the heart was there. And finally it went. It was captured. <laughs> First of all, I don't know the, the subject. Like, you know, I found you were already debating. You know, we're so talking about national reconciliation, uh, which, which Chairman Mao for, raised for me, the other day again. Mm. For me, yesterday, I, I went there to the panel. I, I found you had already talked and that you talked of reconciliation, talked of not politicized human rights and all that kind of what I, lack of diplomatic language called nonsense. But I was not there to, to comment on it. But now, the question you are asking me, for me, I've listened to people speaking. Let me tell you, whether you say that NRIM is ruling this country well, and all those people within NRIM are very happy, and they are doing well, they may be happy, and they are doing well. Like at one time in UPC, some people were happy, they were doing well, in uh, Amin's time, some people were happy and they were doing well, but, if, but when some people are happy and doing well, you know these governance issues in Uganda, the majority are suffering and they are really suffering. And at this time in Uganda, if you want to, to really know the truth, people are simply lost and like hopeless, Helpless, they don't know what next. They, people say, we don't know Oh, our country. We really don't know. That's what it is. For me, I happen to be a person when given this opportunity to come and talk, who speaks what actually majority of Ugandans want to say, but they can't get this opportunity. Because me, I begin by saying, that when President Museven arrived in this country, he did not only say, but he wrote that the biggest problem in Africa is the, question, the issue of governance. And he said that the worst in relation to this governance, which causes Africa and Uganda not moving forward is the issue of leaders who do not want to live power peacefully. He said it very, very clearly, repeated it, wrote about it. And this is the question. You talk reconciliation, dialogue. The question, the central question is, the president who came, knowing what, is, what happens wrong with our African countries, and giving hope to all Ugandans, showing that we are having a new beginning, 
a new beginning marked off by a constitution which I would call whose process was a national dialogue. Mm. For the first time, Uganda, Ugandans had national dialogue at village level, sub-county level, at whichever level. Because as a person who was a member of this commission, and even the CA, I know the extent to which the debate, four years, four years of education of the Constitution Commission alone, mm. traversing the whole country, having this national mm -hmm. dialogue. The question that people were discussing was, for the first time in the history of this nation, the nation which was given to us without, we found ourselves in this geographical area, that for the first time, Ugandans were going to build a foundation upon which this geographical area would be standing to be firm and move forward. And the dialogue took place. And then, if you want to know, it is the Ugandans themselves who brought the issue of term limit in conformity, because they were agreeing, seeing what President Museven had said, leaders who don't want to leave power peacefully. The, the population raised that issue. And we said, so what do we do? They said, because they can't leave power peacefully, let us limit their leadership. And they said, term limit, five years term limit, which was to, to enable us have peaceful handover of power in line with President Museven so that our country may move forward, okay? That was fantastic dialogue. And it, the, the very people are the people who said, because the constitution was supposed, the draft was supposed to be debated mm. by the then National Council NRC with the army together. The people said, no, now that we know what the constitution means, now that we Great know what we have put there, now that we know what we want, let us elect our own people who are going to represent us on those views which we have put there. Do you see how the national dialogue was from the grassroots Upwards. to the top? And I want to say as a person who participated in the both processes, that even at that level of the CA, Surely, one would say that generally, generally, there was consensus on many, many, almost all issues. But there were some issues which were controversial, one like Martipati, because we had... Article 269, the former. Uh, yes, because mm. we had proposed originally... And what we had proposed depended on what we came, we came from the people. People, some of the people were saying, we want to continue with the movement forever. Others were saying movement, 50 years. Others were saying movement, 20 years. Others, 10 years. Others saying, no, we want to, to, to open political parties. Okay? Now we said, this was what we put as a referendum. Mm. This was the commission's reasoning. We said, well, people are saying for life, people are saying 50, people 10, others want now. So the, the overwhelming majority was they, for now, for then, mm. when the constitution was passed, people preferred to be in the, movement. in the movement. But we said, let us put a referendum. You never know. Things may change quickly. Now that we had a new constitution, we may start implementing it. Of course, when you start implementing it, that's why there's always amendment. Thank you. You start let, let, implementing let and up, things with, can with go differently. After a very short break. Okay. Uh, Charles Rabhoro is watching us and says, tell the panel that, they, that here in Ginger, we are beaming with smiles and happiness because OO is beautifully and elegantly dressed. Even his submissions are as clear and concise for the topic. Let's take a break. We'll pick this up. The word the was...
Are you having headache, sore throat, muscle pain, toothache, or fever? Then use Kiwamo Plus. Kiwamo Plus is strong on pain and gentle on stomach. It's available in all drug shops countrywide. It's not recommended for children under the age of 12 years. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Unleash your edge and enjoy smell of Guarana in a bottle and the new smell of pineapple. Crack open an ice cold bottle today for more flavor and more edge. Smell up. Choose flavor with edge. Excessive consumption of alcohol is harmful to your health. Strictly not for sale to persons under 18 years. Please drink responsibly. Here's an opportunity to perform during the UB40 featuring Ali Campbell concert. Using your smartphone, record a video of yourself singing one of Ali Campbell's songs like Red Red Wine, Cherry O' Baby, Falling In Love, among others. Post it on your TikTok or Instagram using the hashtag NextBigThing or the hashtag UB40 FT Ali Campbell. The videos with the most likes or engagement will be selected to either win tickets to the show or qualify to perform live during the concert. UB40 featuring Ali Campbell, the next big thing. This is for the timeless the trailblazers and the trendsetters. Those with a pioneering spirit and an uncompromising lifestyle. This is for those that have called time out on that clay tile roof. Those who are ready to say out with the old, in with the new. Their taste is bold, stylish and elegant. This is for the dream home, the dream come true and being true to your lifestyle. And this is Lifestyle, a premium stone-coated roof tile for those bold enough to redefine premium. <laughs> lifestyle is made with world-class technology to resist funky and fetting. Lifestyle is available in shingle, roman and web profiles. Lifestyle is the premium stone-coated roof tile from Uganda Bati. Dreamline Furniture brings you the best comfort to your home. Come and buy international world class furniture from Dreamline Furniture, ranging from sofa sets, dining tables, king size beds, TV stands, among others. Right from Turkey to Kampala. Save that air ticket money and get quality and durability at Dreamline Furniture. Located opposite Shell Ginger Road, Kampala. Ample parking spaces available behind the Winton Road. Dreamline Furniture. Comfort at its best. Long before Europeans arrived in Africa, great kingdoms and empires ruled over many parts of the continent. Uganda comprised several kingdoms, some of which wielded enormous political clout until they were abolished by President Milton Obote. Even though in law they were outlawed in the spirits and in the minds and the hearts of the people, those institutions, those cultures, those beliefs remained. In 1993, President Yoweri Museveni restored them, but only as cultural institutions. Thirty years later, do they signify a repudiation of the modern state or notions of democracy in Uganda and Africa at large? Sovereignty was taken from Uganda. 
Does the blend of traditional and modern systems pave the way for the much needed political stability and development? The programs that have been carried out in the last 30 years have benefited not only the people of Buganda but the entire country. MBS in partnership with the author of Thrones and Thorns, Owechitiwa Apolo Makuya, brings you a compelling account of the resurgence of traditional rule in Uganda in a groundbreaking documentary coming soon. You're still watching The Frontline on NBS TV and uh, the people of Busoga, NBS is providing around-the-clock coverage of uh, the preparations ahead of uh, the royal wedding uh, slated for Saturday. So it's counting down uh, for the people in Busoga Kingdom as the Chabazinga walks down the aisle, the queen of Busoga Kingdom. And uh, NBS and the other platforms of Next Media will keep you updated uh, minute by minute on what is going on. Um, Dennis Musingu is watching us says national dialogue should begin with consensus on what it means to be independent and how an independent state should govern itself. Then address the governance question. Given our broken political history, address the effects of conflicts that have bedeviled our country. Tackle the question of national unity, given the divisions, and then all the issues Honorable Mao has outlined. That's Dennis Musingu. Um, I have another viewer here who says, um, the 1995 constitution, constitutional process was a national dialogue. All issues raised by Honorable Mao were discussed and addressed in the 1995 constitution. But that document has been systematically discredited. There would be nothing in the national dialogue more than what was agreed and written in the 1995 constitution. That's a comment from Chiomia Katera. Um, another viewer here, uh, yes, uh, Muhimbe George says, Uganda has many challenges that call for a dialogue. The tribal sentiments, injustices, impunity, inequalities, violence, land grabbing, and anger have put us on a time bomb that is waiting to explode. National reconciliation is needed now when we still have a state that is in charge and some relative political stability. We should not wait for a crisis to first happen. General Museveni should embrace this dialogue. He should be its champion. The opposition should also be willing to stand above voter sentiments and politicking. Our country is big enough to accommodate all of us, rich enough to satisfy our hunger, but not our greed, and endowed enough to bring a smile on each person's face. George uh, Muhimbese. I have a message here from, um, let me say I have someone else, uh, uh, pick a message. Yes, Sol Mugasa is excited to have uh, Dr. Matembe on the set and says, uh, we love her so much. Uh, he's uh, sending a message from Russia in uh, Kabarole district. I have another message uh, here from uh, someone else says, uh, why would the National Unity Platform parade well-known accident victims as torture victims if they have genuine torture victims tortured by the government? Why would they... We have the picture of a well-known Kenyan comedian, Eric Omondi, purporting he's among the kidnapped uh, whose whereabouts remain unknown. I'll be glad if you kindly pass on my queries to the Honorable Senyonyi. Um, I have passed the queries to Honorable Senyonyi. Uh, Job Richard Matua is watching us and says, National Dialogue Reconciliation and Reconciliation <coughs> are very important to de-escalate the anger and hunger in Uganda. The country is at the verge of a genocide. There is too much annoyance but no platforms to address it. Parliament has lost steam and is now rubber stamp, a rubber stamp unit and opportunity for employment for Ugandans. I have uh, two members of parliament and uh, the Honorable Minister also sits in parliament as an ex-official. He's a member of parliament. Yeah, he's a member of parliament, ex-official. I, I ask all citizens to support the idea of dialogue and national reconciliation. Without it, this country will be failed soon. Job Richard Matua. I have many messages. I'll pick uh, some others. As we move along, let me just take this uh, the last one from Andrew Arthur, who says, according to Honorable Senyonyi, the only impediment to national dialogue is the NRM and particularly the president. But the same president has appointed opposition leaders as ministers and always given credence to several engagements 
with the rest of the opposition through IPOD. One of the columns of national reconciliation is the <coughs> legislature, where even opposition members <laughs> sit, including Honorable uh, Senyonyi. Aren't right to resist and assert that the problem are the opposition leaders? Isn't he right to assert that the problem is opposition leaders? Let's come back that to this. the point I made. You mm. know, he will appoint a few to silence them because that's his way of dialoguing. You come, how much money do you want? What position do you want? And yeah. Let me go back to Honorable Matembe briefly. You, you, you're talking about the dawn of the 1995 constitution and the promise it carried for the country. I was actually coming to what those people Please, go are ahead raising. Please, your thought. You see, you remember how I started about to leaders who don't want to leave power and how we got this dialogue. And with that dialogue and having our constitution <coughs> and how we started implementing it, okay? Mm. And then down the road, of course, the leader who doesn't want to leave power peacefully, like that gentleman said, started murdering the, the constitution. And, and that constitution had put out as to how Ugandans wanted to be governed. And for him and his people, by buying them, they shattered how Ugandans wanted to be governed. And after shattering that, I remember when we raised the issue of a national dialogue. We raised it after the removal of term limit and seeing that actually the country is moving into dictatorship. So we remember there was this citizens coalition, mm. uh, citizens compact. Uh, that's about uh, 20... 2013, free and fair election. Yes. Yes. Mm. When that one, actually, the, no, no, the that was the process. Actually, about 2014. Yes. Mm. But prior to that was the the with the interreligious council mm. when we had observed the the 2011 elections. I was one of the observers chosen by the archbishop to 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 observe the elections. And as interreligious council, our focus was peace, peace. And we traversed the whole country to observe. Me, I was in the whole of the West. After we had come back and we saw the challenges we are facing and saw that actually the issue of elections, the democracy and all that, things were not at all genuine. Things had gone wrong. That's when we had a conference and said, you know what? We need to seek for a dialogue, like a new beginning of another argument, because this one is now destroyed and we are going astray. I think there is a need for Ugandans again to get together and re, re, or re imagine or reconstruct mm. the kind of leadership and governance that they had needed. And we started that and then Citizen Compact also was talking about all that and electoral reforms and constitutional and electoral reforms. But the government simply ignored, ignored, ignored. And now, for me, the truth is, whatever we are suffering is not because we don't reconcile, we didn't dialogue. By the way, the constitution itself was reconciling all of us. I tell you, when we, we made that constitution, it all Ugandans, everybody we said, for the first time we are coming together. Let us begin working together and see how we move later on. I want to clearly say here that if the current political leadership had the political will and the interest of building a Uganda as a nation, eh, we wouldn't be talking of another dialogue. Now, 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 but now, because now that that, it didn't... Now, now that that same political leadership is still in charge... And that's what I'm what coming would it to. Take? That's what I'm coming to. Yes. I was coming to say, as long as the current NRIM leadership is in power, with all the things we see is they are doing, by the way, I, be, I agree with Senyon. <laughs> you remember when, uh, at 2016, after elections, President Museven said, I am now going to finish opposition completely. I'm going to finish it. 
And I even went and said, let him tell us, is he going to kill people? What is he going to do? And then he started doing what Senyu was saying. Come, what do you want? Some of us have experienced that. Okay. Do you, do you want a, a, a job? Is it money? What do you want? Capturing everybody so that they all belong to him. So that now there is no, no, no other view except one side of power, of, of, of lifetime leadership. Okay. And so as long as he's there, Ogu Mao, Ogu Mao, I told you here, Mao, <laughs> that day they appointed you, we sat here, and I told you, I said goodbye, my brother, my son, you are gone. And after that, I must bring this out. President Mao went to TV and told us how he's working on the review of the Constitution, how, what he's planning to do, and after that, his boss went on TV and said, hmm, me, agreeing with Mao, agreeing to do what? I just captured him like, uh, you know, like I always take others. And that's how I also got him to my side. Now, that is the very man now whom he is saying we is going to convince him to dialogue. Dialogue what? As long as he's there, no dialogue. You already captured Bambi, go and put your views put them there, they will just be there, but for you, you are done and gone. Honorable As for the dialogue, one day, mm. we shall get it when this okay. guy goes. Uh, Laban is watching us from Chitagata and says, the movement I know is multi-ideological and inclusive in nature, so Mao is conscious, if not sympathetic to movement ideology of dialogue, embracing all. And as a Ugandan, Ndugu Mao, thank you for being conscious to multi-ideological politics. Leave Senyo to come later, which is possible from Laban in Chitagata. So, so when you, see, you silence all opposition, you know, we'll keep capturing them and bringing them to the fold. When they as opposed to addressing the critical issues no, being raised. That's, that's also they'll never address them. When they silence all opposition, how does it become multi-ideological? When they want to hear only one voice, a movement voice. On, on, Honorable Mao, before I come to Honorable Semuju, you've listened to the views on the panel here. Which, which I mean, everybody has no, shared. You, you everybody has shared an opinion. Because I haven't had any views. Everybody has shared an opinion, um, and and this is a microcosm of what uh, the country represents. Where is the space for your wish list of a national dialogue and reconciliation and the issues you raised? I I respect people's uh, expressions. It's like uh, parts of the body. Every human being has them, and so are opinions. But you said you didn't hear any opinion. No. <laughs> I said uh, I wanted him to rephrase them. But anyway, you know, every time Honorable Miriam Matembe talks, then I know the difference between being old and being mature. Because at this age... Now you're annoyed. No, I'm not annoyed. <laughs> Sure, I, so my time is immature. Mm, you, you, <laughs> you don't know what you are talking about. <laughs> that is evidence of that, what I'm talking about, that in itself. <laughs> and before the show is over, she will have validated what I've talked about. Immaturity. The, the, the point is, today you are talking about Mao. I know you have uh, a lot of issues with President Museveni. I don't know them. I hope one day, really, you'll see. So why do you say I have issues if you don't know them? You see? P please, <laughs> please proceed and make your point. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> so I pray that one day you get a, a, an opportunity to really sort yourselves out. Because for me, I wish I knew them. But don't transfer your anger against President Museveni to me. Because me, I'm not a voter in Mbarara. I'm not one of those who refuse to vote you to come back to parliament. I have never been head of state. Let's talk about what each of us is trying to do. Whatever you are doing, I wish you the best. So, you asked why is the politics so toxic? 
It is toxic because of uh, mutual demonization. It is wrong for the government to demonize everybody who disagrees with it. And it is also wrong for those who disagree with the government to demonize the government. Because that makes it very difficult to dialogue. And you, you cannot have a, a dialogue if, if my, my starting point, if there's no parity of esteem, even in South Africa, which had the worst political system ever, you, you, you must reach a level where you say, okay, notwithstanding, let us see what we can build together. Is Uganda ready for that? The question is whether we want to surrender because when I hear the discussion, particularly from the Honorable Miriam Atembe, instead of giving Ugandans hope, and she can't lie, instead of uh, mobilizing people to say, this is our country, whether President Museveni wants it or not, we will not be silenced about what we think is right. Because what is right eventually will prevail. And uh, I, I do know that as a Christian, as you profess, you believe that. Then there are those who want to oversimplify the, the issue. Those ones are people who simply want to win an argument. But for, for me, I think we have a problem to solve, a very big one, to bring back the building blocks of Uganda, and we have to go back to foundational issues. There are those who say, the Constitution answered all the questions. That's as good as saying the Bible has all the answers. Th then uh, why doesn't everybody read their Bible and have, and we are good. have the best life? But the, the Bible has all the answers. And a government itself, and, and this is really something we have to think about. If you, from morning up to evening, you are busy only demonizing somebody who disagrees with you, and in turn, you definitely expect to be demonized. A government is based on a, a social contract. We must speak about our expectations of the government, and the government has to declare its expectations. Uh. Like we debate gender relations according to the Bible, uh, they uh, say, no. most people only say, wives, obey your husbands. Mm. They don't read the other side, which says, husbands, love your wives. It's very easy to obey someone who loves you. So, this, this is the discussion. Irrespective of what yeah, you think yeah, and, about and part of that discussion, Mao, let, let, let me bring it up to speed. Part of that discussion is what Honorable Senyonyi and... Uh, the National Unity Platform have been talking about. You have people in incarceration. They are not going through, some are not even going through a court process. Others have gone into a court process and they're saying, look, the people you're holding are people you're holding because of their political views. So as a low hanging fruit, start by a gesture to get those guys out of prison. Then we can have a meaningful ground to have a dialogue. The other day, um, the people in Kitgum and uh, Choli sub-region were celebrating uh, Bishop MacLeod Ochola at 91. And the strong sentiment coming out of there is the, or the actually happening on the ground, the perception, the belief that people are grabbing their land with impunity. Should the international dialogue start with dealing with some of those issues? Even before you go on a round table to talk. I think you, you can create a platform to discuss those specific issues. For today, we are talking at the broad issues. It's like if you, if you have a, a ship and you are already in the lake or the ocean and there's a leakage, I think that leakage should be the number one priority. Mm. Obviously, there may be some people fighting for food there may be some people fighting over some other issue, but I think it is the duty of the captain to attend to 
the leakage. that leakage. Mm. And that's why, for me, I know there are people in jail. And I've made my, my position clear. I do my part. I don't want to go into details. I, I know there are so many other issues, and I'm engaged, and my position on those issues are well known. But right now, the future of Uganda is about how do we change government without violence. I think that is the fundamental question, and that is what I'm calling the, 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 the leakage at the bottom of the boat. If, if there are those who think that there should be other issues to be discussed, those are also important. But that is my, my view and that is my motivation for my being that voice in the wilderness. Honorable, uh, Honorable Semuju, what is that fundamental question to lead this country to a national dialogue? <clears throat> I don't know. The Honorable Number tomorrow begins by issuing a threat. Don't discuss me, attack the... Once you are a minister, everything you are going to say, especially at functions, the, the belief is that uh, government is speaking. I think the Honorable Number tomorrow will allow us to discuss his idea and also discuss him. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the choice? <laughs> 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 but don't you lose it if you focus on the individuals? I had liked the, the, his submission, especially about a bill. He said there is a, um, a proposal to create a, a dialogue and a reconciliation commission. You see, the difference between the Honorable Senior, Honorable Miriam Atembe, and I is that we are not the drivers. The moment you are in government, we will want to hear you announce things that you are going to do that will give us confidence. Or the things that you are doing. Or things that you are doing. When you join us in uh, demanding, I don't know who will now implement those demands that you are making. And that's why I'm very happy with the, the announcement that, the, the, that the, the, there is a proposal to create a transitional justice. Something like that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <clears throat> because whether the, the idea is attacked or not, if you in the government are uh, prepared for it, you will move it. I went to Changkwans to cover the movement conference 2003. And Mr. Mseven in his speech said, first of all, you had the committee of the Chiyonga that had said they don't uh, free political parties. But Mseven said, no, no, there are other reasons why political parties should return. You want him to play a role, and, and that's why the Honorable Mao had really consistently, beautiful. yes, the, the, the Honorable Nobat Mao had consistently said that uh, you will not wish him seven away, he will be part of this process. And uh, I, I agree with the Honorable Senior, I remember immediately after the 2000 elections, Mr. Seven called the, the Honorable Sam Munjua of the Reform Agenda for a meeting. At that time, BSG had gone into exile. After a meeting, they say, no, 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 these matters are not, uh, um, uh, are not matters of our group. Let's have a bigger meeting where so and so will be present with an agenda. That's where the meeting ended. I have said here before, after the 2016 elections, the various groups, including the situation, the, the women of Situation Room, the elders, the church, they made many trips to Kasangat. And uh, <clears throat> we had gone very far, even agreed who will chair meetings. Eventually, Mr. said, no, he had wanted to meet Vesiji first alone. 
then uh, if I meet a messenger, these things uh, can, can move. Right. Of course, knowing him seven that after taking some photographs, that's where it will end. You know, we say this is not about a messenger. The point when Mao made that's not about a Mao. So we told him, say, this isn't about a messenger. Mm. There are documents that were exchanging. Because Museveni's aim was different. One time I interviewed the Honorable Kategaya and asked him if he had any regrets. And he said, believing, he said there was too much believing in Museveni. So his regret was that uh, he's one of those he had fooled uh, and many others. Mm. I, I, I say honorable, but I'm pointing a finger at myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we and believe and that <coughs> we are fooled. Yeah, and, and, and honorable, uh, and Kazora wrote a book, Betrayed by yeah, My Leader. Mm. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. So it's not that there has not been any effort. The efforts have been there. The reason all efforts have yielded no results is that you have to deal with Museveni's appetite for power. Yes. Once that is not sorted out, I remember when the religious leaders went to meet him, started one by one. I've said this many times, you Muvaji, when you had the problems with the Muslims, why didn't you have a reconciliation with them? But you are over shouting reconciliation. Is there any problem in Uganda? Then he said, you people from the West, there is iPod, there is a, another institution under the electoral commission. These things are sufficient. So the only in the earlier discussion, when he decided to go and join the government, he had said these things are, so the good things are going to come, and those of us who are going to enjoy them. I am waiting for those things. I, I, the the Mao who was uh, with us in the opposition, Jeffrey. making demands and, and making calls, we now want to see a different Mao Jeffrey. moving things and making things happen. So this call at a, a, a public function uh, is a call from the old Mao, not the one, the one of the dialogue and the reconciliation commission. That should be the new Mao, who should bring a bill in the parliament and says, this is what we promised, this uh, we have delivered, this we have agreed as cabinet, this we are calling proposals from the public. And that's how I think government must, must work. But government can't continue speaking like they are a civil society, also making proposals to the public and then Mao inviting the public to attack his ideas. Then that will be a talk show. You will be a talk show host, the Honorable Mao, not a minister. A minister must present bills. A minister must uh, process uh, decisions. And then you introduce those decisions to the public to receive views from the public for, for, the, for, I mean for, for the country to move forward. Thank you. So, so in, in a summary, whether Mao wants to cajole or seven, there are people who have done this before. Those uncle leaders went uh, and told the you don't stand. This man is standing for the last time. And uh, I think uh, many of them must, must feel very bad mm. that the person they were pleading for is Museven. So with that, Museven... That was in 2000. With Museven, you are wasting your time. And I want to say it uh, again. He thinks his, his appetite issues. for power, <laughs> whether you cajole him, whether you sing for him, whether you dance for him, we, we, can, we can only mobilize the public to raise against him. Whether you want to say you're a very good leader, so be part of the transition, he, he will tell you, I remember again um, at the function finally, he went to attend a wedding of. Uh, the children of Honorable, I think, uh, Naomi Kawashari and Kazor. And, and one of the elders there said, you see, we are now marrying off our children. There was a time when we were marrying. And he was speaking about a transition. There was a time when we are the ones doing the things. Now it is our children. There are things we didn't do. After the wedding, he said, you come and we do those things that we didn't do. So um, Seven does not edit himself out of this process. He, uh, uh, maybe you will have to get an uprising like it happened in, 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 in Sudan, in Libya. But I don't see anyone who will speak to Museven and Museven will listen. Okay. I don't see anyone. Um, no, but more, even if you assemble an army of religious leaders and the clan leaders to go and speak to Museven, he will not listen. 
he wants to die in office. And, and, and are you suggesting that for as long as President Museven won't listen, then you can't have a dialogue? Is How that what you're you know, I, I, I have said uh, the attempts have been there. It's not mm. that they have not been there. After 2016, I don't know how many meetings I attended. He appointed uh, uh, Rugunda, Mwesu Gwarukutana, said, okay, we now have a dialogue. The situation uh, involved, the Justice Ogola's group are involved, the religious leaders are involved, the Swedish are involved. Along the way, when the pressure reduced, the, the same old M7 manifested. And you one moved who, on. One who, yes, he moved on. If, okay. Mao Let me take a calls, message. if now Mao calls for a reconciliation, maybe quietly they will tell him, Mao, please don't cause me problem. Those things, I am not interested. The 1995 constitution is the summary of the most recent dialogue Uganda has had. The same basic law has been dismantled under President Museveni's leadership, and we are now back to zero, mm. waiting for another liberator. It is absurd. That's John it. Ken Luchamuzi, the man, president of the Conservative Party. Um, uh, has he, has he, how long has he led the Conservative Party? Eh? Ken, John Ken he's, he's watching. You, you can ask him. No, you are the, you are the asker. Eh? You are the asker. He's, he's watching. He's he's, you are the asker. Party is returned in the... 205. Even NRM is still read by one person. <laughs> My contribution okay. to the idea of the need for a national dialogue goes to Honorable Norbert Mao. What is the question the national dialogue is meant to address? Mm. From a historical perspective, the national dialogue shall have to address the question of democracy vis a vis militarism in Uganda's politics. Um, it's, a long, it's a fairly long message. The first political group to call for a national dialogue was UNLF AD, under the leadership of the Gang of Four as they were known then. Under what circumstances did UNLF AD call for a national dialogue? In 1981, after the disputed 1980 elections, President Museveni went to the bush to fight and oust the UPC government, which was alleged to have rigged the elections. UPC under President Obote enjoyed the support of the partial UNLA army, just like today the NRM enjoys partial support of the UPDF. UPC thought they were invisible because they had the support of the army. In those circumstances, UNLF AD called for a national dialogue arguing that Uganda's problem was a political problem and not a military problem. Obote ignored the call for a national dialogue, preferring a military victory. Fast forward, in 1986, NRA won a military victory. UNLF AD once again called for a national dialogue. Museven ignored the call, preferring to co-opt individual leaders from the various political parties into what he called a broad-based government. But in essence, he was militarily strong and could afford to ignore all those political opinions. In short, the national dialogue must address the issue of removing power from the military strong, the militarily strong, to the democratically accepted. Further election must cease being held under the control of the gun. Finally, the dialogue must be in the spirit of among equals, like the Moshe spirit in 1979 and dawn of the fall of Amin. Solomon Webalarali. Uh, is the one who has shared uh, that message. Another viewer here says, um, Awaho from Kazo, kindly tell the Minister Mao that he's in good position to raise what you are discussing now. Let him play his role as he promised us that he, when he, uh, that he joined government to iron out such issues. Awaho in Kazo. Another viewer here, um, yes, let me take this message here. To respect and care for those who once cared for you is the greatest honor one can give. I feel bad when Honorable Matembe makes personal attacks to the person of President Museveni, Jen Kojo. Um, another viewer, yes, let me take this one. Uh, thanks so much for the show. I entirely agree with the Honorable Minister Mao. Dialogue is the way to go. The rest, alternatives, the, the other alternatives are costly in terms of life, uh, property, and time. Fred Bahati. I have a message from Ambassador Harold Dachema who says, um, from Arua, national dialogue and reconciliation are necessary to guarantee and sustain political stability, good governance, rule of law, economic development, prosperity for all, peace and security in Uganda. The sooner national dialogue takes place, the better for Uganda and East Africa. We need to come back into the discussion. I'll pick a few more messages later. Honorable Joel Senyonyi, you have raised your issues and many people watching will, will be saying, why don't you propose those are some of the issues that should be put on the front of the agenda, but actually have a sit down and discuss? But we have said so severally because if, if you must be, because I gave you reasons, I said there's no genuineness, 
and also the critical issues of governance that ought to be discussed will not be on that table. Mm. You see, <coughs> and, and, and I feel sorry for Honorable Mao, either he's being hoodwinked, you know he said we should not be discussing him, but unfortunately, like Honorable Semuju was saying, you have to allow us, Honorable Mao, to discuss you as a player in this. When Honorable Mao was becoming minister, he said, guys, I'm not going there, this is not about me, this is about you. Okay, so I'm going there to procure a transition and that kind of thing. And so he has got to keep trying, even when he knows this thing is not going to work, but to justify that, guys, I, I came here to, to prepare the promised land for you. <laughs> Look, as, as day follows night, the genuineness is detached from this whole process. <coughs> okay? Again, Honorable Mao was talking about demonizing. You see, what, what do you want me to say if you're killing my people? If you're incarcerating people simply for opposing you? You're holding them for four years plus, no serious charges, even where you have charged them. There is no court process kicking off. You're a minister for justice. Dialogue demands that justice happens first. Before you, before you require of me hmm. to consider your dialogue, First, show that you just come with clean hands. You know, in law, we say he who have, comes uh, to equity must come with uh, clean hands. You're not coming with clean hands. You're coming with hands soiled with the blood of my colleagues, people who are held in jail and so on and so forth. And yet you're saying, why aren't you guys interested in dialogue? But who has said we are not interested in dialoguing about how our country should be run? We're simply saying the players are not genuine, okay? We are saying the issues to be discussed issues of governance, those are thrown out the window. And yet they are very important. You know, sometimes we, we talk about these issues and then there are distractions. And that's why I'm bothered when Honorable Mao is telling uh, Honorable Matembe, you, you have personal issues with well, Museveni, immature. you are immature. <laughs> okay, be that as it may. But she's raising critical issues yeah, about uh -huh. our governance. Why don't you address those issues? It's the same card they used to play against Dr. Kiza Vesiji. Ah, you see you, you have your past history or issues with Mr. Museveni. Okay, let's even imagine the issues are there. But he's raising critical issues. Can you respond to those issues? Mm. So there should not it's be the distractions. Yeah? Don't discuss me, discuss mm. the issues I'm raising. So the same thing you're trying to say. Yeah, but you see, if there's something you're doing, like I'm saying, you are killing my people, you are arresting them and so on, I will say stop doing it. Now, if that means discussing you, what, what, what do you want me to do? Because I'm saying, before you require me to come to that table, first deal with these critical issues. Show that you are serious about dialogue. Mm. You are talking about John Kazora. When you read his book, Betrayed by My Leader, he says, as Mr. Seven was going to Nairobi for peace talks, he left orders, continue fighting. This is the person you're telling us is serious about dialoguing. Okay. Now, he's fighting today is killing the opponents by his regime, is incarcerating others and so on. So he's saying, you come, we discuss, but you're still arresting people. Drones today still pick people. And then you're saying, come with dialogue. So, Honorable Mao, Ugandans are happy about some kind of engagement for the good of our country. But our challenge is, there is no genuineness on the part of Mr. Museveni and the regime, who are key players on the other end. Because for them, dialogue is not about, he does not want to dialogue about transition from him. And yet that's what we are saying. You've been around for too long. All the corruption, all the brutality, and so on. These are the issues that Ugandans want to discuss. But Mr. Museveni does not want those issues on the table. That's okay. why when Honorable Mao, as I wrap up, as he was saying, you see, I'm procuring this transition. Mr. Museveni went on TV and denied him. He said, this Mao, yes. I, I don't understand what he's talking about. He did. So how do you convince us that that's what you're working on? Okay. The man you're dealing with is not honest. Okay. Someone says here, dialogue is not the solution for Uganda. The solution is to allow Ugandans to freely exercise their constitutional right and vote the leader they want and yes. their decisions, their decision is respected. Darius in Makindye Kizungu. And he says, you cannot solve a problem. You do not know uh, what caused it. Tell Honorable Mao. Uh, that's Darius. And... Uh, uh, we, we need to take a quick commercial break and uh, pick up this conversation in a moment. NBS Frontline.
Ira kutukanga kwa mtu nti ni gasta, ndala, mukaga, itano, sita, isatu, ash, oni geyes. E ngao ba kubuza machanti. Ngao ba kubuza machanti kodi. Ngao tumukopa cha msanvu, msanvu, msanvu. Msanvu ni ndiye sasa. E oruma dirizao ngao cha mwe ngao cha mwe sente dali kuwayo kumba gaya mwe nemo. E sasa wewe ni yonge chapa zinga mwe baza ngao tu yonge rekai tu jamu cha rechi ndi. E tukopa emba goru na waduti ngao muda. Tuli jukuma la kai tu yonge re miyesi mukaga. Mukaga. E ngao tu kasi msanvu tu momo pe. E baba. Emba gaya mwe nemo ili yonge iku na muna na. Kai miyesi yomu kaga jori kuongera mu ojaji. Oh idi nebi amama pe. Abang tu je ambici yang yunai yunai bandet amu mu. Oh no, nebi balik kumpa kene biamu mu pabi. Tiap mak pici pici. Ojo di sumis. Bek, bila mula ke musa niwe. Tiap majia. Baba tu kaburungi. Simbelan balas. As mulu de. Momo nyawo. Pay or shop with MTN Momo and get cash back every week. It's free of charge. Use the Momo app or dial star one six five star three hash. Upgrade your living space with comfort and style. The end of the year sale is here at Nina Interiors and you don't want to miss out on the amazing deals we have for you. From comfy sofas to sleek dining tables, we've got everything you need to create a space that truly reflects your unique style. Get the best quality and make huge savings this season. Visit our showrooms at House 17, Ginger Road and Prime Roses Mall in Luboa to get the best discount for the perfect family for your home. Nina Interiors. From foundations to homes to skyscrapers, sketches to super highways, come meet the people raising the bar in construction at the first ever Uganda Construction and Infrastructure Forum and Exhibition. Genuine contractors, architects, engineers, surveyors, financers, suppliers, manufacturers, and policy makers under one umbrella for all your construction needs. For four days of thought provoking discussions, exhibitions, and networking. Don't miss the enigmatic Professor P.L. Olumumba, our keynote speaker, from the 14th to the 17th of December at Kolobo Independence Grounds. Visit www.unabsec.co.ug for sponsorship and exhibitions. Call Miss Helen or Mr. Mike Serunko Maon, 0774-992-514. Long before Europeans arrived in Africa, great kingdoms and empires ruled over many parts of the continent. Uganda comprised several kingdoms, some of which wielded enormous political clout until they were abolished by President Milton Obote. Even though in law they were outlawed in the spirits and in the minds and the hearts of the people, those institutions, those cultures, those beliefs remained. In 1993, President Yoweri Museveni restored them, but only as cultural institutions. Consensus. Thirty years later, do they signify a repudiation of the modern state or notions of democracy in Uganda and Africa at large? Sovereignty was taken from Uganda. Does the blend of traditional and modern systems pave the way for the much needed political stability and development? The programs that have been carried out in the last 30 years have benefited not only the people of Uganda but the entire country. MBS in partnership with the author of Thrones and Thorns, Owechitiwa Apolo Makuya, brings you a compelling account of the resurgence of traditional rule in Uganda in a groundbreaking documentary coming soon. Whatever sport you enjoy, Sport Action on NBS Sport has you covered. Whether you want to support the Uganda Cranes or our netball team, golf or athletics, both domestic sporting events in Uganda and international sporting events in which Ugandans compete are the subjects of our attention. What are you still holding out for? Catch all the excitement on Sport Action by tuning to NBS Sport, brought to you by MDN, the number one supporter of Ugandan sports.
Star Times Uganda Premier League is proudly brought to you by Star Times. You're still watching The Frontline on NBS TV, featuring the Honorable Miriam Matembe, Honorable Norbert Mao, Mr. Fono Pondo, the Honorable Joel Senyonyi, and the Honorable Ibrahim Semu Junganda. Um, Honorable Winnie Kiza was unable to join us this evening. Uh, she will be returning soon. Honorable Mao, who is putting on two jackets of opposition and government, has allowed to become a political hermaphrodite. He is now a justice minister in a government that doesn't believe in justice. Some of us who know the former Mao are at a loss. We want to know his views on Ugandans that are disappearing and can't be traced. I stayed in prison for a week with Honorable Mao during the walk to work. We were incarcerated in Nakasongola. He is a very bright person. However, because the struggle for change has taken long, I think he got tired and he has given up. Francis Muizuche. Um, let me see, I will take a few more other messages. Uh, someone here says, uh, I wish to thank Honorable Semu Junganda for being respectful and professional to Honorable Minister Mao. You respected our Chairman Mao as we... Pardon? Eh? You are saying? I'm saying, I wish to thank Honorable Semu Junganda for being respectful and professional to Honorable Minister Norbert Mao. You respected our Chairman Mao as we team Honorable Robert Rukari. Call him in Imbara City. We love him in Western Uganda and can die for him. Mama, watch Tinisa. Eh? Watch, sir. Watch Tinisa, Miria. Let your son live. Regards. This is Honorable Rukari. I think uh, was in this one. Is it Honorable Rukari? I, I think maybe. No, this is Tim, Honorable Rukari, uh, not himself. I have many messages. I'm not able to pick all of them, but I need to come to uh, Mr. Fono Pondo. You're hearing the different views. How does this country move forward? Or is there a problem in your view? Well, I'm hearing different views. Like Honorable Senyanya, I want to say most of the views, unfortunately, especially on the show, this show, are not genuine. <laughs> That's my view. First of all, all of us on this show will have a history. So I don't see a very valid reason why people think that for them they have the liberty to change positions, and Yoweri Museven, because he's the president, should not change his position. Especially if he considers that his, his new position is good for Uganda. I don't think he changes his position to make Uganda worse. And the evidence is that Uganda is much better than it was 10 years ago than it was 20 years ago. Politically speaking, what you are speaking about, dialogue and reconciliation, we have moved much closer to relate better with the ones we disagreed with most 10 years ago, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, nobody knew that Idi Amin all those associated with him, including his family members, would be part of the government. Today, people have been asking, you mean even a means children? You mean even a means ministers can be an ambassador for a means ministers? You can go and ask my brother, Honorable Jim Akena, yeah, our friend Mwenda interviewed him before his father died and said he would never return. In fact, he said he even said he would not cut his dreadlock until Museven is out of power. Mm. Where is Akena today? Haven't we, haven't we moved much closer? Some of you even today say he's part of the bosom of the NRM or even Museven. So for me, where I stand from, Uganda is moving closer and closer, courtesy by the efforts of Yoweri Museven. Those who think 
that M7 has deviated, and I've said on this show, M7 must be a very clever man to have fooled all these bright people, these well-intentioned people, and not fooling them just for one year, but fooling them for two decades, three decades. Now coming to four decades. Yes, and when they all go for elections, they are the ones who lose. And the man who has deviated is the one who wins. I still want to believe that the process the NRM and Museven has midwifed in the country is still genuine and can actually engender his removal through a democratic process of election, of impeachment in parliament, if those who are contesting for power with him are serious enough, mm. in my view. No. And, and there has been this argument. When he used it conveniently, we closed off multi party because oh, we, we put a referendum on multi party. Be after all, some people had been suggested let the, the NRM continue for 50 years. So, if you went for a referendum to change the constitution from the movement to party, why do you think that one is more genuine than removal of term limit, than removal of age limit, as long as it is done through the, 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 the prescribed processes in Parliament and in the Constitution. There is an argument that we had consensus in the CA. Yes, we had the consensus, but politics and society moves. New situations arise, and you contest that consensus. You challenge it, you can dismantle it, provided you do so through the established processes. Yes, along the way, mistakes can be made. Like mistakes were made, I said on this show, I think last year, I said probably the vrugu, the friction in the parliament at the time was so to amend to remove age limit was uncalled for. Because after all, the proposers had an overwhelming majority. But that notwithstanding, you cannot discount that the established constitutional process in Uganda is delivering results. Honorable Senyun, yes, I share your, some of your grief, even insincere as you may be in some of the instances. Where, where but do you share insincere grief? Or I or? said some. <laughs> some. But you became an MP by this very dispensation. Others who support Museven and support NRM lost elections, lost to you. So you cannot say that when you want to discuss accountability, you want to discuss corruption, you are the chairperson of PAC in Parliament. Is it there a question, is there a matter on abuse, on wastage, on failure to, pro to follow procedures that have, become, that have come to your committee? And Museven or NRM or the government for that matter said, don't touch this. Yeah, Uganda so, Airlines. So did, did you listen to them or you didn't? You didn't. <laughs> didn't you, didn't you, didn't you, oh, why, didn't why you preside like over, you've just arrived didn't you preside over that matter? Do you, did, did you want that your view should prevail even when the rules Say otherwise, that is not that, just the views of Senyon as chairman of PAC. But the that report was signed by actually yes, majority so, NRM so, on my committee as well. So, but How even, 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 even the, the report of a committee like yours has a process and procedures within parliament that it goes through to be sanctioned, to be valid, to be implemented. And those are the processes so, that were torpedoed. So, so, I listen to you in, in silence. You are, you are now the, the ones who, who, who are accusing Museven of not listening. You now you don't listen. <laughs> so, the dialogue, I want to reiterate that the NRM establishment 
the Uganda establishment, which generally speaking reflects the NRM or the politic, is for open dialoguing and reconciliation. Thank you. You are the ones who have cited when Honorable Betty Kamiya joins NRM, Honorable Semuju and others would want to impute improper motive why they have joined. When people move from the NRM and join them, then they are genuine. That's why I'm saying much of the club trap I'm hearing is insincere talk. Okay. Um, NRM, Jimmy will not be is watching NRM will not be distracted. You may not wish Museveni. <coughs> you may not wish Museveni. But he's here. He's a principal player. Okay. The earlier you realize that pro proactive engagement with him, even when you say he's going to fool you, he's not going to be genuine with you, the better for your political health, the better for the national political health. Museveni has a huge long line behind him that yes, you may think it is just Museveni, but I can tell you, no, Okay. I can also ask you where where, is, where will Semuju's line go? Gentlemen, uh, but let me, let me, for let me now, make a message. We we'll continue for, this for now, conversation. For now, in the country, my assessment and the assessment of many people in Uganda is that Museven no, has yes is yes is is that Museven <laughs> has the longest line, has the thickest no. crowd. Thank you. Um, that uh, is, let, that let me take is, a that, message. That is willing. That is willing to sacrifice for its cause, for its interest, including killing people. Genuinely, democratically keeping Museven in the leadership of Thank the you. country. Let me take a message yes, yes, from yes. Jimmy Kiberu who says, honest dialogue is, crucial, is a crucial ing ingredient for finding lasting solutions. The moment we stop to dialogue is the moment we start to fight. The parties must be ready to confront the brutal facts. Unfortunately, Mr. Museveni's tale is one of subjugation and compromising others. As a sign of goodwill, he should abandon plans for seeking another term. The nation has a Museveni fatigue, uh, Jimmy, uh, who's watching us. We're continuing this discussion on the Afro Mobile app for the next 20 minutes, uh, so you can switch and uh, pick up uh, from there. Uh, Mike Segawa, I have your message, but I'll be reading it uh, shortly uh, when we continue with the dialogue. from